In this video, I'm drawing on some of the legal research basics and packaging it for office folks who work with the legislation as part of our day to day, even though we aren't writing legal documents. Uh, my video about setting legislation also seems to be very popular, averaging about six views per day, which uh, considering the content uh, seems like a lot to me. Uh, so this video might add to the topic. Comparing these two statute references, there's a lot of information and it's presented differently in both examples. Referencing legislation is not intuitive without knowing how legislation is organized and specifically how it is published in print. Here, the Municipal Act 2001 includes two references to the year. Only the first is italicized. The MFIPA statute only includes one reference to the year, and it is not italicized. One statute references SO, whereas the other one references RSO. What does this stand for, and why is the R added for MFIPA? One of them says C25, and one says CM56. Are these references to highway numbers? Plumbing fittings? Are we playing bingo? This video should help make this unintuitive information more intuitive uh, and help us with our operational drafting. Ultimately, when we reference legislation, we are relying on its authority. Our audience may need to recognize the source to understand where that authority comes from. When we reference recognizable legislation, our writing becomes more credible. Part of why citation information is not intuitive is because it is based on how the statutes are printed in books, uh, but we almost always look up the current online consolidation. Although you may never see those books, they exist, and they matter to citation. Most of the legislation we deal with today is annual legislation, uh, shown here. Statutes are bound in chronological order based on date of enactment, and the volumes are then organized by year. You can see that the volumes are identified on the spine as Statutes of Ontario. Uh, this is where the abbreviation SO comes from. An annual statute may be a new statute without any amendments. Uh, this is called a substantive statute. Or it can be an amending statute that changes an already existing one. It's important to note that even amending bills become annual statutes, just like substantive ones. You can browse annual statutes on ELAWS in order of oldest statutes first and see the same structure. We see SO as part of the citation information for each statute, showing that they are annual statutes. Again, that's statutes of Ontario, uh, and in this case, for the year 2020. You'll notice that with annual statutes, the title will always include the year of enactment. If you are referencing legislation by title only, without SO and chapter number, uh, you will still include the year. Otherwise, the title will be incomplete. The year would also be italicized like the rest of the title. Lastly, you'll see that the statutes are numbered in order of enactment. Specifically, when the statute received royal assent after its three readings. They are organized by chapter number within the annual volumes. That's what C stands for. Our MFIPA example is a very old statute, and that's why the reference shows RSO, not just SO. This stands for Revised Statutes of Ontario. Uh, before the internet and computers were widely used, it was not possible to reference up-to-date, consolidated, consolidated legislation all in one place. 
we would need to reference a section in the original, unamended statute, then cross-reference any and every amendment to that section since. To make that work easier, the statutes would be revised or consolidated uh, every 10 or 15 years. You would only need to look at the amendments since the revision to know the up-to-date version of your section. The latest revision for Ontario statutes is 1990, and for Canada statutes is 1985. The following revisions would have been done in 2000, but by then, online consolidation had become feasible. These revised volumes are different from annual volumes in two relevant ways. First of all, the statutes are substantive. Because these are consolidations, all amendments would be incorporated into their substantive statutes. Secondly, the statutes were enacted in different years before the revision, uh, not all in the same year. Because the statutes are being consolidated uh, and enacted in different years, it makes sense to organize these statutes alphabetically rather than chronologically. Here you see that the statutes are in alphabetical order. They are then assigned a chapter number that starts with the first letter of the statute title. You can see from this example how the information from the chapter and statute title uh, feed into the citation information. Note that this example is from the revised statutes of Canada. They include hyphens in their chapter numbers. Uh, the revised statutes of Ontario instead has a period. We sometimes reference legislation by bill number. A bill is draft legislation that has not yet been enacted. As operational staff, we may have been involved as stakeholders in consultation on draft legislation. We are used to referencing the bill number and might continue using that shorthand after the bill becomes a statute. Also, in the context of consultation, we might think of a bill as something that amends. But recall that the goal with referencing statutes is for efficient and reliable recognition of the source. Referencing a bill number may lead to confusion. In this example, Bill 197 can refer to four statutes within the last 10 years. It's possible that your document would be read in 5 to 10 years, and cross-referencing may be required at that point to determine which bill you are referring to. This makes the, the recognition less efficient. Another thing is that in this example, Bill 197 refers to the COVID-2020 statute, but one of the other possible bills um, is expressly referencing municipal amendments. This could distract from the correct interpretation for some readers. This makes the recognition less reliable. Referencing the statute's official short title makes it easier and more reliable to recognize the source. You can include the bill number in addition for cross-referencing purposes if you believe that your audience will recognize the number. Now these citations should be more intuitive. The complete title in the first example is Municipal Act 2001. The year is part of the title because it is an annual statute. Don't forget to include the year as part of the title and to italicize it as well. For Amphipa, there is no year as part of the title because it is a revised statute. If you are also including the volume, in, volume information and chapter number, uh, make sure it is complete.